right, I'm going to play a short clip of this podcast on YouTube talking about the millennial reign. All right, and I'm going to show you uh, the error of what this guy is talking about. And keep in mind, this is the commonly accepted view, and it's wrong. Revelation chapter 20, we're getting to the end of the book and, of course, even of the Bible. Revelation chapter 20. I want to quote this verse. It says, But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. The one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Some people have used that verse to say that this is just, that the thousand year millennial kingdom is just symbolic. And it's not a literal thousand years because of this verse um, that says, one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. I don't think that this verse can be used to teach that the thousand year millennial kingdom is not literal. I believe it to be a literal 1,000 years. When the Bible says that we're going to rule and reign with Christ. Okay, yeah, so I, I kind of agree that <clears throat> you don't have to use that verse. A thousand days or thousand years as is as a day, and a day is as a thousand years with the Lord. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. One day is with the Lord. Alright, this is really not relevant to what we're reading in Revelation 20. Okay, and so I sort of agree, you know, there's no reason to use this verse, but I don't agree with him either. Be a literal 1,000 years. When the Bible says that we're going to rule and reign with Christ for 1,000 years. Okay, so now we have to get into it. When the Bible says, let's see, let's check out what he says here. Literal 1,000 years. When the Bible says that we're going to rule and reign with Christ. When the Bible says we're going to rule and reign with Christ. All right, so let's just do a simple word search here. Rule is not found in Revelation 20. Isn't that something? So the Bible actually does not say what this man says. He lied. A literal 1,000 years. When the Bible says that we're going to rule and reign with Christ. He's lying. You could say it's a mistake, but it's a lie. It's an absolute lie. I don't think that should be taken lightly. For 1,000 years? I believe it's 1,000 years. <laughs> and there are other times in the Bible where it gives a very specific number of days. It'll say 1,260 days. So okay. is that symbolic of a long time yeah when yeah. he says the exact or 1240 days all right 1240 days all right so yeah this stuff to me you're going to stand on the podium and preach the what you're going to claim to be preaching the word of god and then the stuff that you're preaching not in the bible and yeah, that's a problem and what do you say? A thousand two hundred and forty days, I think he said. Oh, that's not in the Bible. When he says the exact or one thousand two hundred and forty days. That's not in the Bible. That's not in the Bible anywhere. Not in Nehemiah. Not in Ezra. Not in Judges. It's not anywhere in the Bible. What's he talking about? That's you know, it, you could say it's a mistake, but it, let's face it, that's a lie. We're just talking about the three and a half year period. So, there are people that will take the Bible as an allegory. Alright, okay, three and a half year period. 
but there, you know, there's no way that I'll, I'd be able to find the verse that he's talking about because it's just not in the Bible. Three half year. That's not in the Bible either. So that's three lives, and we're not even up to two minutes. And if you're going to teach us stuff, I think you ought to teach it. You ought to be very serious about it and very truthful and honest about it. So in case you've not heard me teach on this yet, let me make it real simple. Revelation 20, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. This is goes back to Revelation 1. But you you know you got to you got to take this stuff serious and you got to be well studied in it but it's not complicated. All right, you think about Revelation 1 verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants which things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. He sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John to show him things which must shortly come to pass. And here we got an angel showing John things which must shortly come to pass. This is another vision being shown to John. It's not a continuation of Revelation 19. It's abject misunderstanding. Not, not knowing the scripture when somebody says Revelation 20 is a continuation of Revelation 19 it's not very clear verse 2 and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years All right, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more Till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season again this this takes understanding but it's really simple okay so before Jesus there was one nation of God and the nations outside were deceived by Satan now here comes Jesus and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes therefore this dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan is bound because now the nation of God is not one group of people it's available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and I saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image neither have received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years okay so these uh, the thrones alright so we are a royal priesthood right now this goes back to to um, you know like Exodus 19 we are royalty the people of God have has always been royalty all right if I could find uh, the verse real quick for you but ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation these are the words which thou shalt speak to the children of Israel all right now we are royalty keep that in mind all right, we are a royal priesthood, a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And now let's go back again to Revelation 1. And he has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. We are royalty, and I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, they being those of us that are saved both living and dead those of us that are saved and judgment was given unto them meaning that we are saved secure sealed sanctified forever and I saw the souls of them which were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the Word of God this is just some just an example of the extreme persecution that we're gonna go through I mean that was already happening in the New Testament John the Baptist being 
probably the most famous, right? Which had not worshipped the beast. Okay, this is not a literal mark. It's not a microchip. It's none of that nonsense. It's a spiritual mark. If you do not have the seal of God upon your forehead, then you automatically have the seal of the beast, the mark of the beast. Because you're not trusting in God, you're trusting in man. And that's a big problem, obviously. All right. Now, all of us that are saved, none of us have that. We don't have to worry about that. All right. Right now, we are living and reigning with Christ right now. How can you rightly say that you are saved if you are not reigning with Christ right now? Think about that. That's a big deal. That's nothing to be taken lightly. Jesus, is he reigning in your life or not? It's absurd to suggest that no, he's not reigning in my life right now. Yeah, he is. If you are saved. If, he, if he's not, then you're not saved. It's not rocket science. Come on now. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. So think about that. What happens at the end of the thousand years? That's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and first the dead in Christ shall rise, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then our enemy is gathered at our feet, right? This is all throughout the Bible. Okay, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Now, what is the first resurrection? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the first fruits of them that slept. He died, laid down his life. He died and defeated death and rose back to life and ascended to heaven and is promised to return for us. He is the resurrection and the life. He is the first resurrection, and we are partakers of his resurrection. And when he returns, we will be lifted up, and the resurrection will be fulfilled. All right, it's not rocket science. All right, to teach anything else is an error in not knowing the scripture, because this is all simple, simple stuff. All right. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death has no power. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? All right. You heard that verse before? I mean, anybody read the Bible anymore? In John 11, verse 26. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us that are born of the Spirit of God. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Didn't I just show you that we are a royal priesthood and a holy nation? And this goes back to Exodus 19, right? We are a kingdom of priests. We are called to preach the gospel to every creature. Y'all can't figure that out? Does anybody read the Bible anymore? It, I guarantee you, these guys, they're not getting this teaching of a thousand years coming after the Lord Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. They're not getting it from the Bible. They're getting it from Hollywood movies. You know, or whatever. False teachers, whatever. It doesn't matter. They're just not getting it from the Bible. Because it's not in the Bible. Right now, we are priests of God. We are a royal priesthood right now. You can't ignore that. You're a liar if you ignore it. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Right? Just like I talked about when Jesus came, he took the, king, the, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. That means... Whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. They are partakers of the kingdom of God right now, and that's available for everybody in the world. No longer is there one nation. Now the kingdom of God is available to everybody, to whosoever believes. 
right? So now when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up, first the dead in Christ and those, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. When this happens, now there's nobody saved on the earth and Satan is loosed and Satan is now granted the ability to gather together the unsaved. Just as Christ has gathered together the saved and lifted them up to be in the Lord, uh, to be in the air with the Lord, the devil down below will gather together his people. Right? And shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog. This is all symbolic representative not literal come on to gather them together to battle all right just as the wheat is gathered and stored in the barn so are the tares gathered to be burned all right, all right. and this goes all the way back to Genesis 3 again does anybody read the Bible anymore and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. We're up in the air with the Lord, and the Lord stomps his foot on the serpent, killing all unrighteousness forever. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up, our enemies gather at our feet, and Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent. All right, this is the prophecy fulfilled when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, and we, there's a that goes back into Psalms 110 as well. Let's just go right to it. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, this goes back to Genesis 3:15, all the way to Revelation 20, verse 9, uh, 9 and 10, or 9, excuse me, uh, when it says, uh, They went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the bluff city, the bluff city which is in the air, uh, the, them that are compassed about are at our feet. Okay, now I'm going to go back here. This is all simple stuff. All you have to do is real connect the dots. It's, it's the same thing being repeated over and over and over all throughout the Bible. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. He's going to make them come to, at our feet because we're up in the air with the Lord. And they're gathered at our feet. They're, Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. All right, and here in Revelation 20, And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. All right, that's when Jesus is stomping his foot on the head of the serpent. And the, and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. All right, and I saw a great white throne. Now think about this. Who's the great white throne? Well, it's Jesus, right? And him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. This parallels what we read in Matthew 24, verse 29. The moon shall not give her, or the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right, this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. When this happens, we are lifted up in the air. Okay, this is parallel to that. All right, and him that sat on that's Jesus, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away. The sun is darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Parallel, same thing. It's just worded different. It's not rocket science. Man, all you have to do is connect the dots. And I saw the dead, small and great stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, 
the, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged. Every man according to their works in death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. All right. This is everything that's going to happen when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. You've heard that verse, I believe. It, what was that? Revelation 1 again. Anybody read the Bible? Really, I think it's a fair question. Where are we at here? Right, right there. Behold, he comes with clouds. He's coming with clouds. And I saw a great white throne of him that sat upon it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. He's coming in the clouds of heaven course we read about that in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 as well but this is the end of the world and when it's the end of the world there are no more chances to be saved all right so what are these guys teaching that Jesus is gonna come and reign for a thousand years well that's not in the Bible anywhere in fact, that would contradict everything that's in the Bible, and specifically what we read here in Luke chapter 1, verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So what are you going to say? His kingdom hasn't started yet? It's going to start after he comes, and then it's only going to be a thousand years? Are you out of your cotton-picking mind? Do you read the Bible at all? Jesus Christ does not reign a thousand years. Jesus reigns forever. All right, and so it's all very simple. Sometimes I think people are just not able to connect the dots. But why are you preaching this stuff simply because you heard somebody else preaching it? Well, you do fact check. I mean, this is a popular thing, isn't it? Fact checkers. You know, check the facts. What's the Bible say? I know you're teaching one thing, but fact check every point that you're teaching. Every single little thing that you say, fact check it. Make sure it's right. What's more important than the truth? I mean, really, come on. All right, that's it.